the six to seven figure show episode 21 ready let's hit it broadcasting from the valley of the sun outside phoenix arizona this is the six to seven figure show tired of working so hard and having no time take your six figure practice and turn it to a thriving seven figure enterprise and now your host author speaker mentor and strategist frank bria everyone welcome to the six to seven figure show i'm frank bria your host and i'm joined today by my good friend adam franklin who is the author of the book web marketing that works which uh it was an amazon number one bestseller um lots of people call themselves bestseller authors i was number one just to be clear about that um and uh, professional speaker, university lecturer, uh, CEO of Blue Wire Media. Uh, his blog was named Australia's number one business blog and his podcast number nine on Entrepreneur Magazine's top marketing podcast. Uh, so Adam's work's been featured in Forbes, uh, Huffington Post, Entrepreneur, uh, The Australian, and what Adam does is help professional advisors and consultants win high value clients. He teaches thousands of students with his online courses and coaching programs and his weekly Blue Wire News email, which I still get every week, that goes out to 28,000 professionals worldwide. Uh, thank you, Adam, for being here. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Frank. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's get kind of things kicked off with uh, the, the, what you do. So, so you've got a book, uh, web marketing that works. What part of sort of digital marketing do you serve? Yep. That's the book. Uh, and, uh, what, what, uh, part of that industry do you serve and who do you typically work with? I know you said sort of professional advisors and consultants, but can you break that down for us a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Frank. So within professional advisors and consultants, I'm, I'm sort of talking about people that provide or work with intellectual property or provide advice. So they're not selling widgets. They're not selling t-shirts. They're selling what some people would call intangible stuff like yeah, knowledge and advice and, and intellectual property. Yeah. So I, I specialize in helping them. They're often independent consultants or, or teams, small teams of advisors. And I help them attract high value clients by using digital channels, but really helping them appreciate of what works and what happens offline. So they're very confident, they've got a lot of IP, they know how to help their customers or their clients, but they just haven't been able to join the dots to be able to do that at scale and online. So that's where I help. So basically, uh, these would be folks who otherwise are uh, getting good, good word of mouth, um, referrals, et cetera, and they really just need to scale up a lead generation um, process that sort of leverages digital channels at this point? Totally, yeah. The, the, the clients I look for, they, they have word of mouth, they've got referrals, they've got a good business, they've got clients that know, like, and trust them, they've got revenue, uh, but they don't have a system for, for replicating that online, and they really would like a bit more certainty, uh, a bit more ability to sort of, you know, turn things up or turn things down depending on, on their workload. And, you know, they've got all the ingredients and I just help them join the dots. Okay, cool. So, uh, rep, uh, basically something to scale, uh, something that's predictable, consistent, essentially. Yeah. So, so, uh, we talked about sort of courses and, and, and programs that you offer. Um, what's sort of a typical way that you're working with folks, uh, in this space right now? Okay, great. So with, with certainly a lot of thanks to you, Frank, I've, I've developed a high ticket program and that's like the, the, the high end offering, if you like. And I can talk more about that as well. But there's a feeder club, if you like, of people that enroll in my online courses. And they have a variety of formats and price points. But from there, typically, if they're a good fit, well, then they might ascend or um, decide to join my coaching program. And alternatively, too, if people inquire about the coaching program and they're not quite at the right level yet or they don't have all the ingredients that I'm looking for, well, then they can go into the online courses and then bring themselves up to speed there. Great. And, and what are some of the things that you're, as you are uh, executing the course, what, what's kind of the starting point and the ending point for them? Like what, when you say you're, you're kind of looking for a certain area or certain level, what are some of the things they do in that course that help bring them a little further along? 
Sure. So in the online courses, what I help them do is I, I help them build, understand what all the building blocks are and then help them give them the tools and the knowledge to be able to build them. And so that is the outcome of the, the course, but also the, I guess the desired result is the fact that they're getting more leads and they're winning more high value clients, but it's kind of yet yeah, d- done on their own type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So they're doing a lot of that work, but they're just implementing that on their own based on uh, the things you're teaching, the templates that you have, et cetera. Right. Yeah. And then when they want that, they're handheld and they want that accountability and they want to master some of those things, then that's when they would join the coaching program to okay. actually get it done. You know, a lot of people do the course yeah. or they buy the course, they get halfway through, they life gets in the way, but then they want that extra level of accountability. And I mean, they're, they're paying for results. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of times what I'm finding is that um, courses, what the course does is it helps people sort of solidify that, oh, okay, this person really does know what they're talking about. <laughs> this stuff is really decent. So now we got to go get stuff done. We're going to have to hire them as a coach or a mentor to, to uh, actually get results. It's funny that you uh, put it that way. So uh, walk us through what that program looks like. What, what is your, how's your coaching program structured today? Okay. Yes. So this has been a work in progress for quite some time and we've had our chats over the years and you've helped me significantly. Uh, at the moment, because there's always that, that challenge of doing one-on-one work and doing right. you know, at a co- coaching sort of level versus how do you get scale and leverage with that. So where I settled was, you know, we used to do quite a bit of one-on-one consulting, but of course, my business partner, particularly, he filled his book pretty quickly. I was focused more on the online courses and some consulting but you feel you, you wake up and then there's, there's no more room to move, room to move. So you get a bit exhausted. You find yourself saying the same thing over and over to different right. clients. And there's all this value there, particularly of other clients comparing notes and getting to know each other, but also saying it once and having everybody benefit to then free up your time to work with other more people or develop more material for them. So the group coaching program is where, we got to and it's it's got elements of one-on-one and it's got elements of a peer group and we draw the analogy toby's an olympic water polo player um for the australian team back in the athens olympics in 2004 he's we used to play water polo as juniors together but he sort of went on to the to that level and there's a lot of comparisons to sport and training that and and coaching that relate really well to this you know so there's a lot of um, training as a group, you know, when you when you've got peers, when you've got people that you're that are pushing you to be better, that are holding you accountable, you perform better. So there's an element of that in the coaching program, and there's also the element of of one-on-one coaching. So oftentimes you need specific help with a drill or a task or something very um, unique or specific to your business right now. So there's the one-on-one aspect of, of coaching directly uh, with me. And there's also, I guess, just having the library of content or essentially the training programs to sort of do in your own time, but learn and keep practicing and getting better, um, which is what, you know, athletes or what have you do. They go home and do their, do their weights routine, their push up routine, their their nutrition, their whatever it is. um, And you don't need your peer group around you for that. You don't need your coach on the phone in front of you, but you know what to do. So you can refer back to that information. So for the coaching programs, the content, there's the, the community, and there's the coaching. So they're nice. the three, three and, and Yeah, that's great. And, and so you've covered the bases of um, basically making sure good skills, accountability, and mentorship are all there and, and keeping people going. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned that I want to drill into a little bit more in depth, because I think this is a really important piece, you've mentioned the element of people performing better in a group. And I think for a lot of people, they might not immediately believe that or think that that's the case or um but but you're seeing that as well you're seeing that as you put people in groups as they start to bond and form a community it actually creates better performance is that is that your experience absolutely it took me a while to get my head around to that because i had this misconception that people valued one-on-one stuff more and yes there's value there for sure but there's a lot more value and there are studies to back this up as well. Yeah. That there's more value in the peer group. And I thought back to my own experiences and Toby thought back to his, you know, varying degrees of sport. Um, 
and business and, and everything else. And it's, it's true. Yeah. You really do get better performance in the group. And so that's why we like to get, we get together three times a year for our intensives where we all, you know, most people can make it. Some fly in, some are based in whichever city, you know, Brisbane or Sydney, wherever we happen to run it, but it's great. We can all get to see each other, meet each other, learn from each other's experience. And then when we do get on the group calls and then the Facebook group and everything else, then yeah, there's that, that accountability and that, and that um, friendship as well. Nice. Yeah. And, th- and that is a thing I, I think is a misconception. A lot of people have is that there's better value in that one-on-one uh, some, for some reason they feel like that higher level of intimacy just is uh, creates better results or a more um, a more sort of unique uh, pathway for them to get where they want to go. But I do think it misses out on all of those other great benefits, not to mention the fact that you can scale it, but forget that just that it's better for the client as a whole. That's, that's, uh, that's perfect. Yeah. There's, I mean, you, you miss, by having the group, you're benefiting from yeah. the other, however many people are in the group and all of their knowledge and insights and experiences going on this same journey. So it seems a bit, bit crazy not to. Not yeah. To- that's the thing, right? You, you can't really replace all of that. I mean, each as, as, um, as, as well skilled as I think any program owner would be, you know, they don't know everything and they're not going to come up with all the different insights or all the metaphors or all the perspectives um, that it might take to help uh, people get where they want to go. So that's a, uh, that's a really fascinating perspective. Um, what are some of the things, Adam, you guys, you and Toby, your business partner at uh, Blue Wire Media, what, what are some of the things you guys have run into that you've needed to adjust as the business has grown, as you've taken on more clients um, what are some of the lessons you've learned or things you had to change through that process? For sure. Look, I mean, Blue Wire as a business has evolved and iterated since 2005. So there's lots of changes in that early part of the journey. But if we focus more on the, the recent couple of years in terms of developing this high ticket program that, that you've been so instrumental in, in helping us with, it has been the transition from one-on-one coaching <laughs> Uh, to the group coaching. To us, it was like, we, we didn't believe it ourselves at the start. We thought one-on-one was more valuable. Why would people want to go to the group environment? And we were our own biggest hurdle in a lot, in a lot of respects because we hadn't appreciated that there's more value in the group until we yeah. thought about it ourselves and our own experiences, being a part of a group for business uh, masterminds, being part of sporting groups, training groups, at whatever level you're at, it's, it's beneficial. So that has been the biggest thing we've had to learn and overcome. And really once Toby had a full book, he had no, no, no spare time to be thinking about the business, working on the business, doing content. He was just busy with clients. And realistically, that has been the biggest challenge, which was overcome really easily because I, it, <laughs> once we got out of our own way, we, said, well, Tobes, let's put it to them. I'm, I'm going to run it. I'm going to free, free your time up. I love this stuff. I could talk about marketing all day, but I'd like to do it as a group. Uh, and so we, we put it to them and said, look, here's how we propose to move forward. It's a group setting. There's still access to Adam one-on-one. We do the weekly calls. We do the quarterly catch-ups and everything else. And everybody came across to the, to the coaching program. And all of a sudden, Toby went from a booked out week to a free a free agenda. And so that was really, that was really powerful. And, and I was doing stuff that I loved it because it was a group thing. I was saying, you know, I, was, I wasn't repeating myself to, to, to 50 yeah. different clients or what have you. Um, it, it worked really well. It, it, liber- it was liberating. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was doing more of what I liked. Toby was freed up to, to explore new things as well. So that's the biggest challenge that we overcame. That's amazing. Yeah. So uh, fundamentally de- uh, overcoming the leverage point for delivery um, to help you scale. That's a, that's a critical piece. Yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of people who are listening that probably feel, uh, some sympathy to Toby's plight of having a completely filled up schedule and not being able to do anything about it or do anything more. You know, when you, when you're booked up, you're booked up and it's, it can be pretty exhausting. I remember talking to someone just about this. So they were doing some program design just a couple of weeks ago and they were trying to estimate exactly what their level of effort was going to be. And, and they said, oh, I think I can probably do 30 calls a week and um, coaching calls a week. And I said, 
I think you should probably think that through. <laughs> uh, probably get about halfway there and find that's a lot more exhausting than you think it is. So that's that's uh, that's great. So as you guys are looking now forward, um, growing, what are some of the things you know you're going to have to tackle at this point um, moving forward in order to continue the growth trajectory that you're on now? Okay, so the biggest challenge at the moment, the biggest thing that we're working on at the moment is is mapping out that path and that journey for, for the client. Mm. Now, churn has been an, a bit of an issue because I haven't done as good a job as I can in terms of showing them what that journey looks like, you know, three months, 12 months, beyond 12 months. Yeah. Um, and so I, I've been crafting that out and giving that a lot of thought recently as to you know we've been we're coming up to the year mark um, for this for this high ticket program um how do we sort of clearly articulate and visualize the journey that they're going on and why they should be staying on throughout and beyond that and also when they're signing up how do we make it clear that you know this is a you know it's a 12-month commitment and, and beyond to get the sort of results that they want, but also acknowledging that there are going to be some some quick wins and some early milestones that are going to hopefully bring in the, the clients and the revenue. Um, so getting that getting that value proposition and the promises clear is what I focus a lot of attention on of late. Yeah. Uh, well, and you've brought up a really, really important point, which is that a lot of people think about this journey mapping exercise as kind of a, okay, and then we'll we'll let the clients know eventually kind of where things go. But as you pointed out, um, being able to uh, craft that vision from the very beginning so that in that initial uh, first conversation, that initial sales conversation, they have an idea of exactly what the long-term view is going to be. So uh, they know that it's not just a one-time, you know, yes, we're going to get some some quick wins, but uh, that there's a journey ahead and a, and a a path to travel down. I think that's a really good idea. I think that's really smart. And I think at the start, I certainly was just, you know, I think it was a month, a monthly commitment of X um, dollars, but right. then I'd get to, you know, a few months in and, and a lot of clients would say, look, I've got enough for now. I'm busy. I know what I need to be working on. Let's just pause things for the moment. Right. And right. Be like I can see, I can see where you're coming from, but there's also more of the journey that, you know, left and the fact that you're busy with more work you know, I've kind of, in some respects, feel like I'm letting them off the hook and not holding them to account to get the best result because I'm letting them uh, suspend or what have you for, for reasons that probably I need to tighten or have tightened up uh, right. since those discussions. Well, it's, it feels like what you're describing is what a lot of times I describe as the difference between a, a continuity program and an ascension program where a lot of people try to get that sort of month over month membership feel to things and then they get surprised when a couple of months in the client doesn't want to stick around anymore. And it's, it, again, they, it's that lack of momentum uh, that people feel that gets that, uh, you know, kind of loses, it loses that feel. It loses that, uh, uh, that, that excitement that happened at the beginning that got them to the spark that got them in, in the first place. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a, again, a smart move, a smart thing to be looking at uh, going forward. Yeah, if they can't track their progress and see where they're at and see what there is to go, then I don't blame them just to go, all right, it's been right. a few months. Well, all right, I'll just, I'll just cancel it because I don't know what's next. And it's, it's totally understandable. So yeah, yeah. So as, as you've been um, working with more and more clients, um, are there any systems or processes that you've put in place now that you feel are um, really helping you in the delivery process? Um, or team members that you've had to add on board as that as that client base has grown? Look, it's certainly in terms of like organizing events and stuff, it's always handy to have a bit of help on the, the logistics yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but what I've found has been the biggest, uh, most useful thing of late has been to be a bit more strict or directive, I guess, in terms of if I find a client asking questions about stuff that's already in the course, say they've booked a you know a half hour consult with me and they ask me about something like how to update their LinkedIn profile. Yes, in the past, I would probably have talked them through it on the phone, but now it's much more valuable for both of us. If I go, look, go ahead and watch module one of this part. There's yeah. three or four lessons. 
And then once you've implemented, take this next half to 10 minutes to 20 minutes to watch the videos, take the next 20 minutes to implement and send me a link or set, post the link in the group once it's done. And I, we, the group will provide feedback on what you've done. So I'm not repeating myself. They're getting the exact same value and then they get the benefit of the group plus me to provide feedback on that. And I think getting more disciplined about and not feeling bad, feeling like I'm actually adding value by, because it feels like unfriendly to be palming them back off to the recorded version of you. Right. But it's still, it's still like me through Zoom versus a, a recorded version of me through Zoom. Right. So they're getting the information and they're getting it with a structured plan, with notes, with a, a process to follow, which is a lot clearer than just sort of freestyling over, over a Zoom call. So getting out of my chain, reframing that in my own head that it's more valuable to them. It just happens to be also a yeah. better use of all of our time. Well, and, and with a focus on implementation, that's the part I loved. You, you basically go watch it for 10 minutes, then go do it for 20 and then come back and, and get it. I think a lot of times in these one-on-one -on -one coaching um, conversations, it does get focused in theory. It does get focused around, um, uh, you know, uh, big picture things. But then, so I've learned a lot of stuff, but I still have to go implement it. The way that you described it, there's such a focus and drive towards actual implementation. It's uh, like, how could you not get the benefit out of that when at the end, you know, I'm waiting for your link to show up for your new LinkedIn profile. I think that's fascinating. Yeah, I find it good because I often fall into the trap of thinking that the client, if they booked 45 minutes or half an hour, that they want 45 minutes of FaceTime, of right. chatting. And that's right. value, but right. in actual fact, progress and results is what they want and need, not just chatting on the phone with me. So, yeah, <laughs> thinking that I'm not the prize is 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 um it's also yeah well, that's right yeah that's true it is true that, that that's a really good point. A lot of people think well, what they really want is my time, but actually, what they really want is a result, and we do our clients a great disservice when we substitute one for the other. That's, that's, uh, that's really good. Um, do you have a process by which you're tracking those questions and adding more content in if you're hearing a certain question come up over and over again? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what I'll tend to do certainly is, is a, if it's a recurring question, I haven't got it in the course, I'll certainly add it. And I've, I've done that many times. The other thing too is typically if it is a one-on-one -on -one call, I will still record it for the, um, individual client and I'll also say look if there's stuff on here that's not too sensitive and you're comfortable with it and it's a you know, good question and a good answer can we just cut that bit out and add that to the group yeah. um, library the archive and we can add that as an, an as an extra resource and most of the time they're, they're happy with that so we can get leverage from that one-on-one -on -one time and provide access for so that more people can yeah. benefit from it. That's, uh, that's such a great idea to be able to leverage yeah, again, the, the, the theme seems to be leverage today uh, of your time where you're, you're teaching something and you know it's going to come up again and, and uh, actually pulling that recording and pulling it, pulling it into the group uh, as, a, as a resource. That's brilliant. That's a really good, uh, really good move. It's good, uh, it's good stuff, Adam. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time and I know you're super busy, so I don't want to take more of your time away, but it's been really really useful uh, information. For those folks who are um, interested in what you're doing, want to connect with you, uh, anywhere they should go uh, specifically that, that would be the most efficient? Yeah, sure, Frank. So my website is bluewiremedia.com.au. And on there, you can download some of my marketing templates for free. And that will deliver them to you straight away, but also um, get you onto my Blue Wire News emails, which okay. you mentioned at the start, you get and 28,000 other people around the world get. Um, additionally, you can just look me up on LinkedIn. Just look for Adam Franklin from Blue Wire Media. And, Great. Like, and I'm very active on there. Yeah, you've, you've been posting a lot of stuff lately about LinkedIn and how you're like dominating LinkedIn. So that's like a really fascinating thing for me. I've been watching those uh, videos, you've got like a new one every day, it seems. Um, what did you like a 100 day challenge or something you were doing recently or? That's it, that's it. Yeah. Well, they're not all going on LinkedIn, they're all going on my Facebook okay. page and my blog, but it's a 100 day challenge. So you did 100, 100 videos, uh, one every day, so. Well, I'm up to 70 odd at the moment, at least recorded, not published, you know, depending on. Okay, 
Well, hey, you're recording. almost all the way through. So hmm. that's, mo that's more than a lot of people can say, I think, at this point. So, okay, great. Well, um, so that link is going to be right below here as well for people. So they'll be able to get right to that. Um, thanks, Adam. Again, I really appreciate your time and sharing your insights. It's been, uh, it's been really interesting. I think the, the lesson of leverage is, uh, is the one we can all take away from, uh, from what you guys have been describing as your journey here. Awesome. Now, thanks for having me, Frank. And thanks again for your help over the years, helping me sort of get my thoughts together on these, on this high ticket program. It's been, it's been, it's been very valuable and I, I highly recommend uh, your listeners and viewers pay more attention to the stuff you're teaching because it is, it is very valuable and I very much appreciate it. Oh, I, I appreciate that. That's uh, that's very kind of you. And, uh, and thank you uh, listeners for being here on this episode of the six to seven figure show. And, uh, and for uh, you, what take the lessons here from Adam. This is uh, uh, the, the, the lesson of leverage is uh, the thing you need to be thinking about. Think about how you're using your time. Uh, look at your calendar, look at your schedule and see where there's opportunities to create uh, leverage to, uh, to get uh, multiple benefits out of uh, where you're spending your time. That's, uh, that's an important lesson. I'm going to go off and do that myself here after this recording. I'm sure there's stuff I could uh, improve on myself. So thanks so much for being here and uh, we will see you next time. All right.